Hey guys, my name is Nick and welcome back to the channel and welcome back to part two of my painting guide for the Games Workshop Knight Valiant. Now this is a big bad boy. I'm going to show you the final effect because it's sitting here on the desk. And I want you to kind of get to grips with the idea of what this is going to look like when it's done. So here we go. This is... I think as far as I'm going to take it, I am tempted with maybe some more detail down here. But we'll, we're going to cover all the all the, uh, all the the cool stuff. So you've seen the, the previous video on how I've done the leg sections. We're now going to get on to the cool, exciting stuff that makes this uh, bad boy uh, what he really is. So without further ado, let's get straight into the video. So if you remember back to part one, I said that I'd already got some of these armour panels kind of-ish done. So the blue work was done, then all I'd done was trim them with brass, and that was about as far as I'd got. So the blue is basically a night blue uh, base coat, uh, and a, night, a, dark, a dark night blue, I think it's called. Uh, night blue, yeah. Uh, which is just a very dark blue. Then you go over it with a lighter blue, and then there's sort of some swirls of purple and blue in there. It's not rocket science. Um, but I really don't like plain blue panels. So what we're going to do is do a celestial effect. So if you've seen my knight, Adeptus Knight, Adeptus Titanicus, Warlord Titan, if I can get the words out tonight, uh, you'll see that I've sort of gone with a celestial planetoid, starry kind of effect. Now I want to do that on this bigger model. I managed to achieve it on a fairly small scale model, uh, but I want to achieve that on one of these ones. So I'm going to pick out two panels here that I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this on one shoulder panel and one of these large leg greaves. And what you need is sets of paint that I've got out there. So I've got a blue and a green. I've got a red and a yellow. And I had a dark grey and a light grey. And then some round sticky dots. Uh, so of two different sizes. And those are going to be sort of the masks that you're going to use for these planetoids that you're going to use in this uh, celestial kind of scene. And what you really need, ideally, is an airbrush to achieve this effect. You could do it by hand, but I don't think you'll get the same uh, net effect. And we're going to do a couple of different planetoids on these panels, and I'm just going to show you exactly how we achieve that. Now with this particular one, I'm going to be a bit clever and try and do a moon effect orbiting a larger planet. So the moon effect I want to go for is black and then grey. And you need to do the smaller parts first. So the stuff that's going to be at the very top of your celestial effect needs to be done first. You then mask that off and then you go deeper into the effect. So the first thing you need to do is apply a black splodge uh, big enough that the small circle that you're going to use, the small sticker you're going to use, uh, will be you know bleeding out of the edge of it. So the, the circle covers, or is entirely covered, is entirely covering a small section of black. And I'm going to repeat a similar effect on a shoulder pad as well. So everything I do on one panel, I'm going to do on two panels in effect. Now once the black's dry, we're going to go over that with a light grey. So just load that into the airbrush. And we, you need to be quite quick with this. When it goes onto the model, we're going to be mopping a load of it off with a screwed up piece of newspaper. And we need to do this while this bit of paint is quite wet. So you can see there that that is all shiny and all wet. So I'm going to grab a little piece of newspaper here, scrunch it up so it's got some... So it's not smooth and flat. It's going to give us a little bit of, uh, of detail when we do this. Get that a bit of newspaper, dab it on uh, quite gently, and then you'll see some of that grey comes away, revealing the black below it. And that is really sort of the moon effect that I'm going for. Don't worry about it bleeding around the edges because that's all going to change when we mask that off. As I said, I'm doing exactly the same on the shoulder pad as well. So just exactly the same, sprayed that with a light grey and just sort of dabbing at that with the newspaper. And you can see just about there really the the sort of marbledy effect of the grey over the top of the black kind of looks like moon craters ish in my mind use a bit of imagination now once that's fully dry and it has to be properly dry I'm going to use one of those small stickers that I've got there just to cover off the area of where I want this moon shape to be and now we can paint the planetoid that the moon is orbiting I'm going to make a, a reddy yellow kind of gassy planet for this kind of uh, think Jupiter I think is that kind of colour um, so what we need to do is kind of rinse and repeat that entire process uh, but with red and yellow so with the airbrush loaded up I'm just going to spray generously around this it's a little bit runny this paint to be honest but it doesn't actually matter for this effect I'm not worried about that brass trim because I hadn't learnt this technique I wasn't planning to apply this technique 
when I first started painting the model. So I'll re-go over the brass anyway, not an issue. And again, I'm going to rinse and repeat that on that shoulder pad as well. So we've got the yellow loaded up into the airbrush. Now I must admit, during making this video, my airbrushes were behaving really, really poorly. I think they're, they're really old, uh, they've been well abused, and I actually, I think I stopped the video at the end of this model and rage quit when I bought a new one. So we'll, we'll get onto that. But anyway, uh, as you can see, I've applied yellow, and all I've done is dab that with a bit of newspaper. We now get this weird sort of... Uh, unusual effect applied to this kind of gaseous giant planetoid. Now when everything is 100% dry uh, I've done similar effects here on a couple of other areas of that model uh, one of which is using a blue and a green and then another one using a dark purple and a light pink and you can see the effect of me testing my airbrush in the airbrush booth but exactly the same again just rinse and repeat that same process put the darker colour down mask it off well apply the lighter colour first sorry then uh, then dab it with the newspaper, then let it thoroughly dry, then mask it off with the circles. Now we can now go back and repaint around this with the original colours. So in this case I'm going back to my night blue colour, which uh, I'm just going to spray it all over uh, and just trying to, uh, you know, wear those, uh, those joins on the mask. I'll just try not to be too heavy there, I'm just concerned about bleeding underneath those masks. But you can see the effect here, I'm just going over with the blue and then we're uh, we're happy with that and you can see where my airbrush exploded all over my airbrush booth again with that blue I really did begin to lose my temper now once that is dry we're going to go over with a little bit of light gray just around the edges of those uh, of those mask circles this is going to kind of give that uh, bright uh, aurora is that the right word aura around the planetoids give it that kind of glow like they're being backlit by some kind of celestial uh, sun or star that's in the near proximity gives them a kind of a nice little effect and makes those planetoids kind of stand out and we're going to go over that with the grey and then we're going to rinse and repeat that exact process try to get it a little bit narrower spray and then go with a bit of white as well and once we managed to peel those those uh, masks off this is the net effect so we've got a nice sort of greeny blue planetoid a purpley planetoid and there's something that incidentally looks a little bit like an eyeball um, <laughs> that's the way I kind of looked at it. Um, I'm hoping it looks like an eyeball and not something else. Uh, but it kind of does look a little bit like an eyeball. But you can see the same effect then. I've gone. I've just gone with two planetoids on this one with a moon. Again, it does look a bit like an eyeball. Um, but that's the kind of effect we're going for. It actually looks alright once I've added some details. So we can now go back to the main painting desk. We want to apply some uh, a bit more detail to these. And we can apply sort of a starry night effect. So what we're going to do is basically just apply some white in little star patterns uh, into that blue area and then we're pretty much done. So you don't want these to be uniform, you just want to kind of apply it in different sizes as well, so tiny little white dots, some larger ones. Uh, I kind of splay out a couple of them just so they look a bit more uh, unusual. And this kind of just completes the effect that it's a starry you know, night sky and you're looking up and you can see these uh, these planets glowing in the sky and I think that's it's quite a cool effect, I think. So because we've airbrushed everywhere, we've resprayed everywhere, I've gone over all of that trim back with Brassy Brass. And the next step for me on my road to gold trim is to then Agrax Earthshade that right back down again. So it becomes a very dirty, pitted uh, brass effect. So all I'm going to do is just, now that that, uh, that brass has dried, is just go over that with Agrax Earthshade. Uh, pretty much on all of the edge panels that we've got here. All of the trim that I've got knocking around on the leg grooves, the upper legs, the arms and so on. There's a whole bunch of this stuff so it's a good idea just to try and knock it all out in one batch job. With that Agrax all now dry, it's a case of dry brushing very very carefully with some gold. So I've got quite a stiff dry brush here and I'm just going to sort of pull that away from the model. You've just got to be a bit careful that the, the metallic doesn't flick onto the blue and where it does you just get a q-tip or a, uh, an earbud, cotton bud and then just sort of whilst that's still kind of wet just uh, mop that up if you do get any spray dry brushing can do that depending on the bristle type of the brush all I'm going to do is just go around all the brass areas and just give that a strong dry brush with the uh, with that gold paint with that gold paint now applied um, I'm going to be kind of attaching all the uh, the leg armor itself to uh, to the model because there's only one final stage to that uh, gold trim and that's to give it a Reichland flesh shade wash 
just to sort of bring that super brightness down to something a bit more uh, a bit more to my liking now where everything's been sprayed and covered in paint and so on the contact points I really want to try and keep clear so that the uh, the uh, plastic glue can take a bit more of a quicker hold and not have to dissolve through paint and so on so any of the main contact points here I'm just going to remove any of the paintworks and then just use some plastic glue I use Revels glue for this uh, because it comes in a nice little point and I can aim it properly and we just glue those panels on now and with those panels applied the uh, the model is beginning to take shape already it actually looks really pretty cool now for me though uh, this model isn't entirely blue so Lee Joe Astorum has a load of yellow in here but when I was painting all the armor panels I didn't know where that yellow was going to go so what I did is just paint everything in blue first and then we can go through how I do the yellow recipe uh, and where I pick out those yellow panels a little bit later on. But whilst those uh, those bits are still drying on there, we can just go over with the Reichel and Flesh Shade. Certainly on the bits that I'm not at the stage ready to glue yet because we haven't done any of the torso. So I'll apply that here, focus on, on those little rivet points so that the uh, uh, wash kind of recedes, uh, nestles around those to give it a little bit of prominence. And that's pretty much it. And we're going to do exactly the same on all those panels that we've glued onto the legs. Now with the legs pretty much done, uh, we can move on to the torso. Now at the top of the picture you can see I've started working on the yellow work as well. Um, the yellow recipe is fairly simple, but we'll, we'll get to that a little bit later on. Uh, but I wanted some concurrent activity whilst that Reichlin flesh shape was drying, so I started doing some of the yellow panels. So we go on to the torso now. So the torso is going to be painted very similar to the legs. So you can see um, I've applied a whole bunch of brass to this in various sections. I'm just going to pick out some various hoses and cables and whatever and paint those in red just to give those just to give something to look at. Now again once the arm uh, the arms are on, the top panels are on, the front armor plates on, there's very little you can see from the sides unless you start looking sort of underneath his armpits. But something just to break up the monotony of of plain silver and metal really. So I'm just going to go around and pick out some areas in red. So you can see there I've done all of that uh, red bit, so any sort of hoses and cables and stuff that's kicking around, I've just picked out some bits. But there are some sort of energy vent type things. Now I've done this with my other knights as well, so I'm going to replicate it here. There's these weird little three lines that you can see on some of these uh, these areas of the model. Now there's some on the legs, uh, there's some on the hips, and there's some here. I'm just going to paint them with a little bit of blue. And what I'll do is I'll gloss those up so they look like they're sort of part of the plasma drive or part of the engine... Um, venting system or whatever you want to call it just just a bit more detail really next up just to tie that red into the rest of the model and just to give a bit of tonal variation from plain old silvery dry brush I'm gonna slather in some Agrax Earthshade so that's already been applied to the brass works already but I just want to tie this in um, over the uh, over the red and also pick out some random sections within the chassis itself uh, just to give it a bit of tonal variation again stuff that's entirely optional you're probably not even going to see it or even notice it because you'll be blasting your uh, the uh, the heretics off of the tabletop and you'll not be fussed about uh, you know looking at the paint job because it's all shiny and looking at the uh, at the nice bits of armor panels and not the uh, the underneath kind of stuff next up is another entirely optional stage now I want to apply a bit of weathering to this so I've got some uh, MIG, no it's not, it is AK Interactive Rust Streak Enamel Colour. Now this is an enamel paint, not an acrylic paint, so in order to thin this and wash your brushes afterwards, I'm using a bit of turpentine, but something similar like, um, what am I thinking of? I'm looking down at my desk, something like White Spirit would probably do the job as well. Uh, you don't, you can't clean this stuff with water. Water and enamels don't mix very well because they're oil based. Um, so I'm just going to use this stuff because I've had it kicking around. I really quite like the effect, but you can probably get away with, you know, more Agrax Earthshade or more Serapim Sepia. You can use that to kind of weather it. So all I'm going to do is just go on sort of the nuts and bolts and the rivets and so on, and I'm going to do exactly the same on the legs as well while I've got this colour out. Um, just to go back over that video that I've done before just on the leg section there was no weathering involved in that so I'm just going to go through and just give it it just gives it something a bit more exciting to look at it looks like you know general rust or oil streaks uh, from the chassis whilst it's uh, advancing in battle and so on 
Again, entirely optional, and you can probably get away with just standard GW dark brown wash colours as well. So with most of this kind of finished, you can see there I've done some blue venting effect on the top of uh, the back of that chassis as well. While I had the blue out that I was doing those small little vent pieces, I just uh, applied blue to there as well. So again, entirely optional, you could have left that metallic, but I just felt like a little spot colour was going to break it up quite nicely. What I'm going to do now is just go around and gently apply a bit of silver to some of the uh, brass edge trim just to give it a little bit of a weathering effect. Just very nice and gentle. Anywhere that's sort of prominent and brass on the corners, I'm just going around with a little bit of silver just to, just to give it a bit of a worn out effect. And you can see in fact that blue effect at the very top there. So the last couple of sections of detail here is basically the, uh, the Mechanicum cog that's on the back of the two reactor vents on the back of this uh, war engine. And all I'm going to do is just paint that 50-50 white um, as is standard and then we are finished. So we just have a quick spin round and you can see there half the, uh, half the skull is white and the other half of the cog is white. That is pretty standard. Um, all I've done is do that white. There's no, there's no other technique in that. Couldn't really show it on camera. It's quite fiddly to do with a very small brush. Um, but that is the top part done. Um, so we can move on to some of the more cooler things like guns and stuff. But just to show you the uh, the, the effect now, so you can see that the top and bottom uh, kind of tie in together now. So the legs done very similar to the torso. If you're painting the legs, I recommend doing the torso at the same time whilst you've got all the same colours out uh, and also the upper arms and anything else that's using those colours. It just does save you time, but it kind of does mean that the progress is quite slow because you're doing so much in the same colour, you don't really see much progress. But same thing goes on these upper arm sections. These hold the weapons together uh, exactly the same. There's a little bit of red cabling, a little bit of brass cabling, a little bit of gold, a little bit of agrax, and a little bit of serapium sepia. And that's pretty much it. So those are done exactly the same. And we've got some other bits here. So we've got some melter guns that go on as well. And exactly the same kind of colour scheme, really. These are kind of metallic. I've left them slightly movable. Um, but those are done, and I did paint the very ends, end tips on these as well. So, so the first thing I've done is just pick out some spots in brass just to make it nice and consistent in colour. You can really go to town on some of the fuel tanks and stuff like that if you really wanted to. Um, but for me, yeah, I'm not overly fussed. Um, just to make sure it's a, a you know, a, a, an effort of paint that is good enough for me on the tabletop. It's not going to win you a golden demon, but it's it's certainly probably one step above, you know, average tabletop stuff. At this stage then I'm going to start putting a few more bits and pieces together. Now you can see those melter guns I've actually painted the very end. They look a bit um, burnt on the end. Simple effect on that. I painted it brass. Then I used a purple wash, purple glaze. Let that dry. So that went about halfway down the weapon barrel. Then over the top of that I applied a blue glaze. Um, so where the blue then blends with the purple it becomes a bit darker. It looks a bit more uh, heat damaged. So we can start putting things together now. So this top carapace, there's a lot still to go on that. Uh, as you can see I've painted in some yellow sections. Now I'll just go through my yellow recipe while I'm doing this on camera. The first stage of that yellow recipe is a Vallejo heavy, extra opaque heavy ochre. Now this will remove any of the other previous colours below it. It takes about two or three coats even though it is a heavy opaque because I do thin it down because otherwise it gets a bit lumpy. Then once that's been done, I move on to a golden yellow, uh, again from Vallejo, but I'll leave all the uh, the colour translations to GW uh, in the description below. Then once we've done that, we do switch to Games Workshop colours and we go for an an applied recess trim or a recess shade of Cassandori yellow. We let that thoroughly dry and then we also go over that with Serapim Sepia. And then I mix a little bit of white in with the yellow and then use that to make any highlights. And that is my yellow recipe that I've used on this one. But what I'm doing now is just removing some of that paint again, uh, just to give a good bond, uh, colour bond uh, for the, the sections that I'm about to glue. Before I put that uh, carapace on, I did want to make sure that the head can still fit even after that carapace is done. So I didn't want to put the carapace on and realise that I couldn't get the head into place. But there you can see uh, exactly that it will go on or will come out once the, uh, once the carapace has been applied. With the glue on, we can now put that carapace into place. Uh, it did take a little bit of wiggling in because it's, it didn't line up perfectly flush straight away. 
So just be a bit careful when you're doing that that it is going into the right place. As you can see there, I've had to take, you know pull it out and put it back in again uh, just to get that engine section to line up perfectly and then just sort of clonk down into place. And once I was happy with that, apply a bit of pressure and then put to one side to dry. And once dry, I'm going to move on to the melter guns because they mount not only in sort of the recess or the hole at the top of those front weapon pinions, they also glue onto the chassis as well. Uh, so I just wanted to put those into place. Now there is a little top section. You are able to sort of move and pivot the uh, the melter guns left and right and up and down. That's entirely up to you whether you want to glue them in place or want to have them movable. Uh, I'm I'm neither here nor there on movable weapons on what I consider a static toy for use in the rules or just looking cool. Um, but you know whatever floats your boat. And once those melter guns are in place, we get this uh, this next stage. And I just wanted to make sure that the, the guns, I still got them movable, because I wanted to make sure they're in a nice pose once everything's put together. So I've actually left the, the melter guns so they do move left and right and up and down. But I guess once I've decided on the final pose of the, uh, the weapon arms and the legs and so on, then I may sort of uh, adjust those into a, a more aggressive or suitable looking final position. Now just because I wanted to see what this would actually look like uh, with the um, the fancy night sky, the uh, the effect that I've gone on that, I just wanted to sort of butt that up against the uh, the side of the chassis just to make sure that it still looks cool. Uh, just making sure that everything was clamped down. This did feel a little bit loose when I was uh, you know sort of uh, manhandling this uh, uh, the vehicle, um, but I just wanted to double check. But there we go. Now exactly the same with the upper torso. I want to pick out some details on the uh, the big harpoon cannon here. Uh, I forget its exact name right now. Uh, is it like a Thunderstrike harpoon or something? Either way it does like flat 10 damage or something. It's pretty disgusting. Um, so I just wanted to pick out some of the canisters and so on. The, the uh, These are like, it fires like a compressed air giant chain harpoon. So I just wanted to pick out some details again just so that it's not all flat one colour, boring metallic looking. You can really go to town on this, but I wanted it still to look functional, um, but equally the, the compressed air cylinders and so on are supposed to be, I, I guess, replaceable commodities from your uh, uh, guys that are looking after your battle suit between, between fights. Uh, so I wanted them to look like they can easily sort of pop out and be replaced, but it's just, you know, just added detail just to break up the monotony of all the metal work. And again, just picking out various hoses and cables on the other weapon as well. Now once we we're all happy with uh, red and brass and everything else, um, it was a case of just applying similar weathering techniques using that um, uh, AK Interactive stuff, a bit of Agrax Earthshade, just to tie in some of the colours, just to give it a bit of a spot, a bit of tonal variation, exactly the same as we've done with the legs and the torso. With that all done, we can now move on to highlighting some of these blue panels. So what I'm using here is Imperial Blue. Uh, with a tiny little bit of white. So I'm just going to edge trim and edge highlight a little bit here. Uh, it's quite difficult to see against quite a... because I don't want it to be completely stark initially. So I want this nice fine line that's running around the inside of the panels. It's a little bit cartoony, it's a little bit gimmicky. It's not entirely natural looking, but it does mean that the armour panels don't look completely flat and boring. So all I'm going to do is just go around all of the blue sections and do exactly the same. So it's a bit of... And then it's a bit of imperial blue or, and then white. Add that in about three different stages and then just finalize with very spot corners of white. And as you can see, I finished up that uh, the top canopy section with that effect. So just sort of along the, at the key junction points or the key armor trim panel points, you'll kind of get the idea and all the sort of the corners really um, is where you want to go to the brightest spot. And it just makes, it, as I said, it looks a bit cartoony, but actually makes it sort of pop and look less flat uh, and just gives it a nice bit of a, a pop or a bit of a feature to look on the armour panels. And then we can put it all together and we can see where we've got to. So no head yet, uh, the, and the weapons, as I said, are all magnetised and so on, but this is the where we've got to. So there's no, no shoulder pauldrons added yet. Just wanted to give myself a little spot check of where we're at. So what I want to do now is start gluing some more pieces together. So I'm going to attach these uh, large shoulder pads to the rest of the model. And to do that, I need to remove uh, the, the paint that was in the, uh, the connection points there. So I've scraped away that exactly the same as I did on the leg panels. And just going to glue these in place. They're a little bit fragile, I think, uh, where they connect. But you see the idea. It's just gluing them on. And then I'm just going to prop these up on a paint pot 
so that gravity can just sort of take its effect and I haven't got to sit there and hold it until the glue begins to set. Now the next stage I want to show is how I apply the um, Legio Astorum symbol. Now I want to make sure that it's exactly the same as I've done with my other ones and this is my shiny new airbrush. I told you I rage, raved over my airbrush before so this is my brand new one and this is its first outing. So what I'm actually using, because I don't have a sticker of exactly the same size that I've used my other nights, I actually have used, when I first did this, the top of a golf tee. Now that same golf tee has done all of my nights to date, so it was the one that I'm going to use for this. So with a little bit of blue tack, that's now stuck onto the armour panel. And exactly the same as we did with the um, uh, Aurora Glow around those planets earlier, it's light grey, followed by white, and then we hand finish that. So what I've got is the airbrush loaded up with a little bit of grey and then just starting on the actual golf tee itself and then pulling away so you can see where the spray is going to go rather than go outwards and in so you can control it a little bit better. So apologies for the camera angle because I'm having to look round and focus but you can see exactly the effect here. And just change the angle as you go round and just lightly apply this grey around the, uh, the... Who'd have thought golf tees would have been useful in 40k? But well, that's what I've used because I wanted that uniformity of size. But if you've got a, a small white sticker, or any, well, an any colour sticker, if you've got a small white dot, that will be equally as good. And with the airbrush now loaded up with some white, we can just go around exactly the same, just trying to keep it a little bit thinner so that the grey kind of shows through from the background. And we just keep that white just to the, uh, the inner side of that golf tee as best as possible. And then for the grand reveal, we pull that off and you can see obviously there's still the blue underneath it but we get that white uh, aurora glow around this and we're going to fill that blue patch in with black so that it fits with the rest of the uh, of the design and the Legio Astorum, the Warp Runners iconography. Now you can use decals for this of course or decals as I've been corrected in my previous videos, they're decals. In, in fact the English dictionary calls them decals as well. Um, but there, and there are some available. I think Forge World did used to produce them. I'm not sure if they still do. But the uh, the Adeptus Titanicus decal sheet also produces them. Um, so if you're not happy with doing that effect, you can just uh, use a transfer and you'll be good to go. Now what I want to do, exactly the same way as I've done with my other ones, is just put some uh, striations into that white Aurora Glow just to pull out some nice little spikes uh, looking like, uh, I don't know, sunspots or whatever you want to call them, just so that it isn't just a round circle with a halo. They sort of striate out. I don't even know the right word for this, but you'll see the effect in a second. And we're going to start off with a fine line of grey. And with that grey loaded onto the brush, all we're going to do is draw in some lines, at sort of the longer lines at sort of 90 degree angles to each other. So sort of north, south, east and west, depending which orientation you've got. And then just some smaller ones in between. And then after that, we'll load up with some white and we'll go over those and leave a little bit of the grey at the very ends. But at the main sort of heat point or the main glow point around the black circle, we'll leave, uh, we'll leave in a white colour. With the brush loaded up with some white, we can now just repeat that process as I just mentioned. And just go through, pick out some little white lines and it just completes the effect of the, uh, of the iconography of this wonderful Legio. And with that effect complete, we can see the the end result. I think that looks pretty cool to me. Uh, I didn't mention also, by the way, I have stuck in the head, and I've also stuck on, at this point, the two sensors on top of the melter guns. Uh, nothing too tricky about that. I haven't even painted those those sensors. They're just going to get a red dot just to indicate the lens. Um, but the head, you know, the yellow effect was painted, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, I gave the formula for that, and then just stuck that on. And the head has got some brass and stuff on that. Exactly the same as everything else. There's no, nothing new or tricky about that. There's that little top hatch window that we're going to paint. Uh, I'm also looking at where I'm going to apply some decals to this. Um, that I'm going to rip out of the Adeptus Titanicus kit uh, and the Knight kit just to give it a little bit of a, a wow factor. Now there is one more armour panel going on and that is the chest plate. Uh, and that's got some scripture on it or uh, you know where you can do some fancy writing. And with all of my other knights, I've actually painted that in various different colours, but they've all got the word Lucius on them, because that is the forge world from which the Legio Astorum comes from, and where they teleport from into battle and so on. Uh, so that's exactly what I'm doing. I'm just going to use a, a variation of grey on here, 
uh, and then just paint in the word Lucius on top of that. I'm actually going to hand paint that, but I think there are some decals about that you can do that with, uh, but I'm just going to hand paint it. So my very best uh, high gothic that says Lucius on it. It's very difficult to see on the camera. I appreciate that. It doesn't focus very well. Certainly not that close anyway. Um, but you can see the word Lucius is written on there with some little weird little lines just to make it look like it's not from uh, someone in the in, in the year 2019 that's written it. Um, and that's pretty much it. And you can also see in the background there, I've started painting some of the missiles as well. So all they've done is just been painted red, washed, highlighted, and then a white tip. Nothing difficult about that either. Uh, and then also there are a couple of cannons that need to go onto this kit as well. But we're just going to put that um, that uh, chest or neck guard into place, uh, and we can take a look at the rest of the kit. And with that in place, that is pretty much it. We've just got some uh, some decals that I'm going to apply. Um, but when we come back, I'm going to have a full photo gallery for you so you can see the Knight Valiant fully complete. Now, you can obviously, if you're going to do this in any other household or Legio colours, very similar techniques. Just change your colour palette from blues to reds or whatever, and you are hot to trot. And that is the Knight Valiant complete. Let's roll some pictures. So there we go then guys, a Knight of Valiant complete. In fact, that is the first Warhammer 40k model I have finished this year. And I think he comes in at like quite a few hundred points. So he won't get that much tabletop time. Um, but as you know, this channel is all about the uh, the Knights and the Titans, uh, as well as Thousand Suns and everything else that I do. But this I'm trying to focus on Knights and Titans this year, clear some of that backlog, clear some of that Forge World goodness. And kind of scale up as I've gone. So I've done Adeptus Titanicus, I've now moved into 40k scale. Uh, who knows what's next on the cards. Uh, but I hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you learned something new. If you did, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. I shall catch you guys on the next video. Yeah.